Welcome to November's Texas Balance of State Continuum of Care General Meeting. This is Sophia Cheka, the Assistant Director of the Texas Balance of State. To my left, I know you guys can't see us, but to my left, I have Craig Fierro. Hi, y'all. Uh, I'm Caitlin Baer, Balance of State Programs Coordinator. Hi, this is Kristen Zakor, the Data Coordinator. Hi, Mary Rickleck, the COC Manager. Tiffany Hart, System Exchange Coordinator. Thank you. And we got Jesus is on the line with us as well. Yep. <clears throat> How many people do we have on the call today? We've got 55 with us today. Awesome. So it looks like we have a pretty full house. We do not have a map for you today. Sorry, y'all. Um, I want to thank you all for attending the general meeting on October 4th. Um, to those of you who attended in person, it was a packed house, and we really appreciated you guys sitting with us um, for several hours, hearing what we had to say, and also engaging with us. And everybody who was online, um, again, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties that we experienced. Today, you may have noticed that we will be talking about the Texas Balance of State Continuum of Care work plan for just a little bit, um, and that's pretty much most of what you missed um, during that meeting. So we're gonna cover that to make sure that you guys also have that information. So thank you to everybody who attended the general meeting and then also to everybody who was at the conference in Dallas. We heard a, a lot of really great feedback that this was the best track yet. It was our second year doing it. So you guys have set a high bar for us for next year. Um, anything else anybody wants to add? Nope. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the point in time count. Kristen, you can take it away. Alrighty, hello everyone. Once again, this is Kristen Zakor. Um, I just wanted to do a quick uh, overview of what the point in time count is for those of you who may not be familiar with it, and also just provide some extra information. Um, so the flyer that you are seeing right now, I sent, or actually posted on our website, um, and you can easily adjust this to meet your community's needs if this is something that you would like to use. But like I said, I wanted to do a quick overview of what the point in time count is. Um, so it's a count that is conducted each year uh, where communities throughout the balance of the state administer a short um, survey to those people experiencing homelessness um, in, in the area to try to get a better understanding of what the issue is and also just to see um, if those individuals' needs are being met. Uh, the reasons why we count, um, well, those that receive federal funding are required to participate in the PIC count, um, but we always do encourage any other community who is interested in kind of uh, better understanding the issue in their community, we encourage you all to participate in the count as well. Um, point in time counts are important because they establish the dimensions of the problem of homelessness and help policymakers and program administrators track progress towards the goal of ending homelessness. And also on the local level, the point in time counts help communities plan uh, services and programs to appropriately address the local needs, to measure progress in decreasing homelessness, and to identify the strengths and gaps in your current uh, homelessness assistance system. Uh, so very important things that this uh, data helps us with every single year. Um, and if you are in a community that is participating in the point in time count, please make sure that you are spreading this information far and wide um, because we, I'm sure you know the pit leads would appreciate you kind of promoting it to get some extra volunteers um, that can help on the day of the pit count. Um, then the next thing I wanted to go into was just quickly talking about our, uh, the app that we're going to be using this year. It is a bit different process. Um, it's called the Counting Us app uh, from Simtex Solutions. So it is designed to, um, as a mobile app, but you can definitely use it as, um, on the computer as a web browser as well. So say if you're in a shelter and you're conducting the surveys, um, you don't need to be on your phone or a tablet. You will have a link that you can access um, and be able to fill out the survey with the clients um, on your computer. But this is just kind of a, a, a quick snapshot of what the uh, mobile app looks like. It's really user friendly. Um, we're all very excited about using it this year. Like I said, this is a, it's a new process for us. So we hope that it's going to go well for everybody and we'll be looking for your feedback too after the process is over. Um, but just really quickly to the far left, we see 
um, kind of where you will be selecting the uh, particular survey you're going to administer. The next one in the middle shows us how it's going to be tracking the actual location, which is a really great feature to have because now we're going to be able to see kind of we're going to be able to see exactly where these uh, PIT surveys have been administered and get a better idea of where people are uh, most likely to be found. And then the last one to the right um, is just a quick snapshot of how the survey actually looks. So the majority of the answers are going to be available through via like a drop down, yes or no type thing. So it's really easy to move through um, the survey. Probably will only take about three to five minutes tops to do so. Um, and then I just wanted to also show you uh, another feature of this particular mobile app, kind of like I mentioned before. Uh, you can see in the, the far left, this is kind of like a, a wide view of Texas, and this, this is all test data um, that we've been working on. You can kind of see the different areas of where, you know, these, these test surveys have been administered. Um, so once, you know, we do complete the PIT survey or in each of the communities, this uh, map will be filled out with all the information and it'll be awesome for us to kind of break it down community by community and also as a, the balance of the state as a whole. Um, and then you'll see on the right, that's just kind of more of a, a closer look at a specific area, kind of what it would look like uh, for a specific region um, that has completed the pit count. So like I said, this is all test data, so it's going to be a lot um, more intense and a lot more involved um, when we do get everybody's information in there. But I just wanted to give you guys an idea of the new system that we're going to be using and how awesome it is. Uh, and then lastly, um, I just wanted to um, let you all know if you are interested in participating, um, but maybe you don't know who to contact in your local community, please do reach out to me. Um, my email is right on there. It's kzakor at thn.org. Um, so I can make sure that you're getting connected with your local pit leader uh, so that you can be part of the count. Uh, if you are, um, I'm sorry, I heard. Is that your email? Oh, no, it's not my email. I was like, that oh. is wrong. That is my personal email. Oh. It's Kristen at THM. Thank you, Greg. I was like, I have not seen that one yet. <laughs> yeah, I get used to writing my personal sometimes. Okay, thank you for correcting that. It's Kristen at THM.org. Um, so as I was saying, uh, if uh, you are in a community that has not participated in the pick out before, um, and that is something that maybe you are interested in doing, also please contact me at Kristen at THN.org, and we can figure out the next steps. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we have uh, uploaded some pit materials on our website. Uh, so if you would please take a look at those, and Craig's going to show us where we can find them. So if you want to scroll down a little bit for me. So you're missing the header because my screen's small. You want to go to underneath the data section, which is down over here somewhere. Underneath data, head to point, <coughs> point in time count reports, right under the heading. That handsome gentleman right there, keep going down right here is where everything will be placed. Yeah, so these are the latest materials. Um, so please do review them. Let us know if you have any questions or concerns, or if you are um, in need of any other types of documents, I'd be more than happy to help figure out uh, what we can create to make this process a lot easier and smoother for you all. Um, and then also, if there are any pit leads on the call today, I do want to remind you that we are uh, going to be co-hosting a training webinar with SimTech next uh, Wednesday, the 15th, it's on, let me see, let me just double check when the period right. is. Yeah, next Wednesday, so November 15th at 11.30. So the webinar with SimTech, 11.15 at 11.30. We have a question. Uh, we have a choice of using the app or paper survey, correct? No, this year we are just doing all app. That is a very good question. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Any other pit questions for Holly says Christian? we need paper surveys. All right, Holly, I will get in touch with you, and we can discuss it further offline. Thank you for letting me know. Anything else? Moving on. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kristen. That was a wonderful overview of the point in time count. I always love hearing you speak. Okay, um, 
So now we're going to move on to the COC current priority project. So the first one is the Texas Balance of State Continuum of Care Work Plan. Um, so one of my responsibilities uh, in moving into this new position is to develop the work plan. It's something that we've attempted to do the past several years, but with everything going on, it's never really truly come to fruition. And so that's something that I'll be working on in the next two months. The plan is to get a lot of input from members, from you all, um, and we'll also be talking with the Continuum of Care Board about the work plan. Um, my preliminary thoughts about this, so just so you guys know, I don't have anything concrete yet, I'm just doing a lot of research, um, is I'm pulling from other Continuums of Care and what they're doing regarding work planning. We're going to be using the notification of funding availability uh, for the COC program competition from this year and our responses to um, the NOFA to inform our work plan, as well as HUD's uh, priority policies. Um, and those include such things as like maximizing your resources and creating a systematic response to ending homelessness. So we'll be working on overarching goals for the continuum of care in the next year, and we'll be also identifying uh, the steps that need to happen in order to make sure that we identify those goals. So the, the idea with the work plan is that it guides a lot of the work of each of the staff members of the Balance of State, but it also gives you guys a really good idea about everything that we're trying to accomplish. And the hope is that for next year's um, general meeting at the conference that we can show you guys a work plan and say this is how much of it we have accomplished. And you have heard me in the last several years talk about systems change and improvement, and the idea would be really looking at it from a continuous improvement perspective to see how we can do things better. So for those things that maybe didn't work out how we had expected, what can we tweak to make have happen the following year? Um, and for those things that worked out really well, how can we replicate that in other avenues? So um, I just wanted to let you guys know that that's something that we're working on. It's I'm really excited to use, to be able to do this. Um, I think it's really taking a lot of the more practical experience that I gained being the uh, systems change coordinator and applying it, not in your communities, but in our own office. So I'm really excited for that opportunity. Um, anybody have any questions about the work plan? Nothing yet. And if you, if there's anything you want me to consider or you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, or if there's anything you think I should consult that maybe you have consulted for your local homeless coalitions or for your agencies, I'm always open to getting resources from anybody. Did somebody write something in? Okay, it was about kids. Okay. Um, so the next thing, uh, which I will also be talking about, is the HUD COC program competition. So just a quick overview. Uh, you may remember that uh, the COC program competition opened Friday, July 14th, which, as I said today in the board meeting, seems like ages ago. Um, Hurricane Harvey hit on Friday, August 25th. We requested an extension from the HUD Special Needs Assistance Office, or the SNAP office, and they granted it to us on September 11th, and our extension deadline is next Thursday, November 16th. So what we have done so far with the COC program competition is that everybody who, uh, so all of our renewal projects, those, those are the ones that last year had received funding, and then everybody who had indicated that they wanted to apply for a new project had submitted their applications, they went through threshold right around when Harvey hit. They went through threshold review with staff. Um, once threshold was closed for each of the applications, we then moved them on to the independent review team or the IRT where they were scored. And actually today, so this will answer your question from earlier, John. Today, we met with the board about the priority listing. So in the last, since like about 2014, 2013, 2014, HUD has been asking us to tier our projects. So we have to use performance data and basically rank all of our projects according to that performance data and tell HUD 
based off of the funding that you have available, this is how we think you should fund the projects that are applying for CSC program funding. Um, so we did that today. All of the applicants will receive um, the priority listing today and also if you wish to submit a grievance regarding the priority listing, um, that will be contained in the email they will be receiving. Um, we will be posting the priority listing at a later date. So before we can do that process in eSnaps, which is the electronic system where we do all of the application, the projects need to hit submit. So the thing that I want to tell to any applicants that are on the call is this email is not your notification hit submit. So please do not hit submit. You will be getting that notification either late this week, and that's contingent on whether or not we receive any grievances, or if we do receive grievances, you'll get that notification early next week, and we expect you to move with that pretty quickly. Um, I think that's it. Does anybody have any questions with that? John? <laughs> John Cooper says, so we should hit submit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. John, I will John contact Cooper. Emily. No, I'm kidding. Um, I'll turn this car please, around. Yeah. <laughs> please do not hit submit. <laughs> um, any other <laughs> questions or jokes? <laughs> Looks to be good so far. Awesome. Um, great. Uh, the next thing we are covering is related to HMIS. So, Jesus, can you please take that away? Yes. Yes, I can. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, I, with the little brain that I have left, uh, I might add, um, I'm going to start actually with uh, the HMIS uh, data standards. And I'll explain later about why I have no brain anymore. Um, their new data center started in October 1st, as most of you uh, know, uh, especially like uh, any HMIS user. They're not so new for us anymore, but uh, they started in October. Um, there was some changes here and there, nothing too drastic, to, to be honest. Many of you have been great and reach out with questions, uh, concerns. Uh, this year was actually a very good year. Since January, we started having uh, the HMIS monthly webinars. And we've seen an increase in participation, which is great. Um, I have a, heard great feedback about it as well. Um, it feels like we're closer in a way. And uh, you get to hear a lot of what's going on uh, about changes that are coming. We do tips. Um, and that's another reason why I think the new data standards weren't as disruptive as uh, other years because we were able to unveil them and discuss them with, with our HMIS users little by little. Um, so when they finally were looming over us, the changes um, wouldn't be so drastic. We did have some hiccups, it is expected. The changes in the back backend, um, well, a few reports were not ready, you know, it affects several uh, situations. The way I started to look it, uh, at it, uh, it's almost as if the first month which was the October, I mean, it's like the VEDA phase. <laughs> We're able to discover some bugs before, but ultimately it's not until you, the user, are working routinely on the system that we'll find other issues that went through the, through the cracks. So thank you for your feedback as usual, spot on. I want to see if I can share my screen over here because there was uh, some issues, some things that we were working on and I wanted to, make sure that you guys can see them. Hold on one second, let me see. I think I can share my screen over here. You should have it now. All right, can you see it now? Can you see HMIS? Yes, yes. All right, um, might be a little too small, but all right. I mean, just basic stuff. I mean, again, all of this, was covered during the, the webinars that we have monthly. Um, some icons change here and there. I mean, we wanted to make sure that it was easier for you guys to identify what, uh, what you were going into when you click any of these uh, features that we have. Uh, but the most important thing that I wanted to share was that when you click on here and you launch the, what we call the carousel, HMS carousel, you move from clients to shelter to providers, and then you go to the last page, which is resources. This is actually one of my favorite things right now because we had a lot of questions about how to do this, how to do that, and then we decided, okay, well, I mean, if we, everybody's going to be in HMIS anyways, well, let's, let's keep them engaged in there. 
And so uh, I worked with Ben uh, and Victoria, and they created this amazing thing, which is pretty much all the tutorials that you can see in in um, in YouTube. But everything is here in HMIS because sometimes people have questions like, okay, I forgot how to check a uh, client into a bed, or I forgot how to add a family into uh, adding a family member or removing a family member. All of those things are here, and Ben was able even to separate them between basic, intermediate, and ninja. Uh, well, no, advanced. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically, what happens here is that whatever you want to know. Uh, if you forgot about reporting or how to export, which is something that uh, a lot of people ask about too. Well, you come here and then you can see the videos without having to go to YouTube. Uh, everything is in HMIS. We were able to embed all of the videos there, whether it's a right report, an SSBF, uh, the e car. Well, I mean, the e car is going to go out of style very soon, but everything is going to be updated here, which is going to make everything easier for, for you guys, uh, event, uh, evidently. Um, the other thing that I wanted to discuss, uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's, I guess this is the uh, the best time to to do a, a, a shameless plug. This month, we won't have a webinar. We're working on AHAR, and then Thanksgiving kind of tackles us in the end. Uh, then December is another weird month, so what we're thinking is that we're not going to have the session. Usually, we have the, our HMIS webinars on the last Thursday of the month. Uh, we're not going to have it this Thursday or November. We're instead, we're going to have one last session at the first week of December, which is right after we uh, right after we submit um, AHAR, that's final submissions. Hopefully, we will have some time to celebrate. Um, and one last thing before I go into AHAR mode, um, this last webinar will be particularly important because it's the last one of the year. And the HMIS team wants to hear your voice. We will be talking about ideas, plans for the future year, and your input will be definitely needed. So, so join us, please. One last session. We have already uh, completed 10 already. Uh, we, we wanna go with a bang. Speaking of bang, AHAR. That's my next topic over here. As many of you know, the annual homeless assessment report is on. And I say as many of you know, because obviously this concerns housing projects. If you have a services only project or even a street outreach, you uh, um, you really don't, I mean, really don't need a lot of feedback for you then. I will need some feedback for you on system performance measures, but in AHAR only participating agencies are emergency shelters, transitional housing, permanent supportive housing, um, and next year, rapid rehousing, but not this year. Um, so that's why I said a lot of you, not all of you have uh, heard all of this. But the team has been working really hard on this, uh, and you have been working really hard uh, on this too. So I want to start by giving you lots and lots of kudos, props, thank yous. Uh, we, are do we are not done with corrections, but the thing is looking presentable. Um, I, 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 we have two weeks of intense scrutiny and please, again, check your emails um, because if you see an email in there that has uh, related to AHAR, please open it and let's get into business with us because right now our focus is actually on two questions. Uh, that's one, uh, sorry, I have here two cats and they don't like each other and they're hissing right in my legs, so I'm just scared. Um, it got real really soon. Um, so those two questions are basically previous living situation and time in that living situation. If you're in HMIS, you actually find those questions in the assessment, the first page of the assessment when they're asking where the client was before uh, he or she came into your project. A lot of people leave those blank and it's just not good. <laughs> Uh, and so we have been sending back emails asking you, please correct this. Uh, please help us uh, get an answer because again, we don't have these answers. Only the only you do uh, because you're the one that work with the clients. So those are the two pending uh, issues that I feel like are in on the rise right now. Check-ins is another one. We have worked with a lot of you guys, and uh, again. 
from last year to this year, we have seen a great uh, deal of progress. Uh, but again, I, I understand that sometimes in, in, in emergency shelters is a little more complicated because there's a, lot, a very high turn, uh, turnover. And so that's why we, we have to, to um, I guess, suggest that whenever you have a client, whenever you enroll your client into a, a emergency shelter program, make sure that later you put that client, I mean, not later as in another day, I mean, like after you finish the workflow, put that client into a bed because then you can show that all the beds that you have uh, available are actually occupied. And that's part of the things that uh, we have uh, going, um, especially in emergency shelters. So, but again, not as bad as previous years. So I want to say, I mean, I have seen some progress. And again, this is thanks to you guys. Uh, you have been working with us. You have been asking questions and you have been a, a, a lot more hands-on uh, than previous years, which is great. And I really, really appreciate it. Our data is getting better. Your data is getting uh, better. Your data is improving. And we're already discussing ideas on how to make it even better for next year. We want to make data great again. And I know that with all of your help, it is it is really possible. So again, there will be some emails that we'll be sending like this week and hopefully not next week. I mean, if we are able to solve everything this week, we can let uh, we can let it rest and submit early. Um, but again, we're still on on that. Um, it's not done. We're getting really close. Um, and if you have any questions regarding AHAR, please let me know. Uh, you can email me, you know, my email, jesus at dhn.org, or you can send a question over here and I will more than glad uh, reference to it. But that's my report so far. That's why I have no brain. I've been working on ACAR all this time. You can finally take a rest, Jesus. Not until the job is done, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I'm taking the screen back for me. Thank you, everybody. Right, back on track. Here we go. Next up, we have Tiffany Hart with Coordinated Entry. Hey, everybody. Um, I just wanted to briefly talk about the how the process has been going with Coordinated Entry and the balance of state. Um, everybody's final draft of their policies and procedures was due on September 1st. Um, there hasn't been a community that submitted a complete final draft yet. Um, we've been doing lots of back and forth. Um, there's, we're currently on round three with most communities in the balance of state. Um, we have, there's 76 days left until implementation, uh, which is January 23rd, 2018. That is the HUD deadline. Um, because there's still a lot that needs to happen with implementation in the balance of state, we have decided to set a new deadline of November the 30th. That will be the last day that we will, um, that's when all the final edits will be due to the policies and procedures. So anything turned in um, needs to be finalized and approved by your communities by that date. Um, just a few things to look forward to. We do have some trainings that will be coming out um, regarding coordinated entry. Um, we also will be uh, releasing an assessor's manual soon, so just be on the lookout for those things. Thank you, Tiffany. Mm -hmm. uh, the next item up is Hurricane Harvey recovery, and to just going to be fully transparent, I've been gone the last two weeks, y'all, so I know very minimally about what's happening with that, at least on our end. Um, the little that I've heard, it sounds like um, the general land office is actually coming to, or the general land office is willing to listen to us in regards to how funding will be spent for housing and for homeless services. Um, that's, that's that information that I know. I don't know anything more and I don't know, yeah, I don't know anything more. Um, so our office is working on that. We, many of you may have received a survey from us because we were trying to glean what the impact has been on 
provide or participants in your projects, but also on your project or on your agency itself. Um, so while I was gone the past two weeks, the team had been reaching out to people. We have pretty good responses, right, Craig? Yeah. But we still have uh, people that need to respond. So if you haven't done that yet, we, ple we, we encourage you to do that soon. A lot of that data we will be using um, to advocate for you all, to advocate for those uh, 36 federally declared counties in the balance of state. So I highly recommend that you guys do that. Um, I also want to remind you to check out our website for any um, updates on Hurricane Harvey. There is a section for that, and we are uh, updating that pretty regularly. Um, I, if I remember correctly, there were some pretty important deadlines that were coming out for the individual assistance stuff, and I think one other thing, and I'm sorry, I don't have that concrete information, but there are some deadlines, so I highly recommend that you check out our website. Um, we've also heard from a lot of projects that they're still working on hurricane recovery. We heard from HUD TA that it's going to take anywhere from five to seven years, so it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, and I just want to let you all know that we are here to support you, so please reach out to us with anything that you may need, both from the balance of state perspective, but also as THN as a whole. Um, Eric, who leads our, Eric, who is our president and CEO and leads our statewide initiatives, is trying to do coordination among the, all of the COCs and trying to do more of that advocacy at the state and the federal level. So he would be a good person to get into contact with. Um, does anybody have any questions regarding hurricane recovery? Or updates from their community. Yeah, or yeah, Craig, any updates from anybody's community that was impacted directly? No. Okay. So if any come in, we'll let you know. Um, next up is Mary with COC Board Elections. All right. Uh, we are currently holding elections for board members, and we've got nine seats available. We had 15 people run for the nominations, and so we were able to double slate a lot of the seats. Mm -hmm. So we we're grateful for that, that so many people um, nominated themselves or were nominated. I want to point you to what's on the screen now. It's our COC board member nomination information. Um, if you'll scroll through a little bit, we'll see where the people's nominees descriptions are. Um, so we have sent an email and you should have gotten a link to vote, but we want you to read the nomination information first so you can see the really high quality of nominees that we received. And I especially want to point out we had five people running who have lived experience, meaning they are formerly homeless. So that was an increase from years past, and we really um, appreciate all of you working really hard to find that information. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Close your eyes if you're if you get motion sickness. Is that what you want, or do you want the actual? The actual descriptions. Um, yeah, there you go. No, that's nomination form. Sorry. Let me see. Them. Okay. Yeah, so we'll continue looking for that. Um, we did include a link because you're at this meeting. In addition to receiving it via email, there is the link on your agenda to the nominee's information in a paper ballot, and then also the link where you can vote via an online survey. So the voting can be very quick, but again, we would like you to please read the nominee's information and see what um, skills and talents each person is bringing. There it is. So you'll see um, for every seat we've got the nominees names and the questions that they answered and I think you will be impressed as we were of all the expertise that any one of these members could bring to the board. So we do encourage you to vote and voting closes on November 16th which is next week Thursday and if you have any questions at all you can let me know. It's Mary at THN.org. Mm -hmm. 
that I'll go ahead and do the casting vote. That is this one. Yeah, so there's a picture of the ballot itself, what you'll actually fill in to complete your vote. Your email, both links, the forms, we're good. Okay. Yeah. Looks like you have the next couple of items, right? Yeah. Um, we also wanted to just point out to you, and we have a link on our agenda as well, that to the COC general meeting schedule for the upcoming year. We officially started our new fiscal year at the October meeting. So this is our second meeting of the current fiscal year, but we wanted you to uh, make sure you knew that we do have the meetings scheduled for the remainder of the year. So you can put those on your calendar now if you haven't already and make sure to join us on those dates via webinar. And then the next thing is also my item, state ESG update. Just a brief note that the Texas Department of Housing and Community Affairs, or TDHCA, which oversees the state ESG grant program, their board considered many awards at their October meeting. However, they are considering more awards for tomorrow's, at tomorrow's meeting, November 9th, at 9 o'clock, and that is available as live streaming for anyone to watch. There were some outstanding um, issues with a few of the agencies within the balance of state, and so we will get an update on those tomorrow at the board meeting to see what our final ESG awards are. So um, we don't usually send that out. I'm guessing TDHCA would definitely send it out. But if you would like more information, reach out to me, and once those are out, I can help you go through it or send it to you. But we are excited at the number of applications that were submitted this year, and the very high-quality applications that scored high. So um, a lot of your colleagues across the COC did an incredible job of designing programs and setting high-performance standards um, as well as those projects that are applying for continued funding. So we were excited to see that and sad that not everyone could get funded, but hopefully um, we will know tomorrow what those final results were. Before we move on, I actually want to say thanks to Mary. I know she spent a lot of time with consultation, and I hope the applicants found that to be useful, and that's something that we will be continuing in the future. So thank you, Mary. Yay. Yay. Um, so next item, tomorrow we have a webinar by ORCODE on leadership and ownership and ending homelessness. This is essentially um, the first session of their leadership conference on ending homelessness or leadership academy on ending homelessness. So it takes, they have two. So they have one that's like the intro session and then they have a master class. So it's taking that intro session and then boiling it down into a two hour webinar for everybody. Having attended both of them, I highly recommend it. It's going to look more at like a systems wide perspective. And Zach is a really great speaker and he, because he believes in continuous improvement and systems change, will definitely own up to things that have worked really well and also things that he <laughs> did very poorly and what they learned for, from it. So um, I highly recommend that everybody attend. And you'll see the link also on the agenda. Yeah, I just sent it to the audience too. And it's from 10 to 12 tomorrow. And it's space limited to 100, so once 100 fill the seats, nobody else will be able to get in. So. And we will be recording it, <laughs> so it will be available at a later date on our website. Yeah. Never fear. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is Caitlin. Okay, um, so I wanted to talk to you guys briefly about the Rapid Rehousing Institute, which was hosted at the end of October in partnership with the VA, more specifically the Supportive Services for Veteran Families program. Um, in concert with HUD and some of their TA providers. Um, this Rapid Rehousing Institute was uh, split up into two different tracks. So there was a system track and a service provider track. So that way those who were attending could focus more on rapid rehousing as uh, part of a system or a housing crisis response system. Or uh, they could look at it more as the direct practice of working with clients and what best practices are there. Unfortunately, I did not get a chance to attend, but our very own Jim Ward was there. 
Um, he's not with us today. Um, we also had two members from the Balance of State who were able to attend. That was Michelle Yates at La Posada Providencia. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Michelle Wormley. Really? Okay, yeah. yes. Sorry, I, had, I thought I saw Michelle Yates' name somewhere. Sorry, Michelle Wormley out at uh, Woman Inc. And then uh, Catherine Bisson at Aveline Hope Haven. So if you guys are in contact with either of them, feel free to bug them, pick on their brains. Sorry, I didn't ask them if I could say that, but I'm sure um, you know, we want to get that information shared. And then I know Jim will also um, want to dissipate a lot of the information that he's learned. Um, I don't know what his plans are at this point, but I, knew, I do know that we would like to be able to share the lessons learned there with all of you. Um, the partnership between the VA and HUD was really important because SSVF, or the Supportive Services for Veteran Families program, um, has already uh, developed a lot of best practices for rapid rehousing that they have lots of data to support, and now they have a track record um, that supports the approach that they're using. So they were sharing the best practices that they've picked up through that VA program with COC and ESG, or community, not community, I'm sorry, Continuum of Care and Emergency Solutions Grant Rapid Rehousing Providers. So we look forward to sharing more with you as soon as it becomes available. Um, Michelle, I know you just typed something in, but do you have anything to say about your impression of the Rapid Rehousing Institute? And did you attend the provider track or this? I'm assuming that's what you attended, but whether or not you attended the provider or the systems track? The SSVF, uh, SSVF provides some really great materials on rapid rehousing, and their SSVF university is absolutely wonderful. So I recommend people check that out. And I will say uh, SSVF university is entirely online, entirely free. They have a staff onboarding guide. They have various forms to look at. Um, they have a lot of their policies and procedure manuals on there, not from the individual agencies, but from the SSVF program office. So that is always available to you. Um, if you would like to learn more about that program or how your program can run more like that program. Mm -hmm. Michelle hasn't responded yet. She may be typing, so we'll move on. And if she lets us know anything, we'll um, pop tell back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mary, you want to, or who's covering the next? I got it. Okay. So, good news for some, bad news for others. This will be our last month with GoToWebinar for these meetings. Through a couple surveys we've taken, we would like to en engage a little bit more, get a little bit more interaction at these meetings and not make it so much of a podcast that you sit there and listen to us berate you for two hours. Starting soon, we will send out a test email for Adobe Connect. Adobe Connect is the same similar platform, same specifications. It's just nicer. We can split up into groups. We can have live chats. We can go to instant websites. We can track numbers left and right. You won't have to do anything else but do the test email I send you. I'm going to send you a very simple test your system, make sure it works. I will be available for a week to walk anybody through these meetings, but ideally starting December, we will be completely rolled into the new system. So be aware that these emails are going to be coming through. It's going to look like THN talking about Adobe Connect and testing your system. It's not spam. You will really want to test your system to make sure you have all the plugins, the flash player, and everything ready to fully see this. Come December, we're going to have a lot more face time with you people. You're going to be able to see kind of what the war room looks like, what our offices look like, how these meetings come about. But ideally, it's to engage you a little bit more and give you a little bit more sustenance to the things that we're talking about. But again, if you have any questions, I will be the one to help you walk through that. Pretty soon, you will see the test email come out. It will walk you through the instructions. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at any time. Great. Thanks, Craig. And back to Caitlin and Mary. So it is. Oh, that's that's my next. So I wanted to make you all aware, this is Caitlin, by the way, of two new HUD CPD notices, bless you, that came out, um, I want to say, within the last two weeks. Um, one of them pertains to the Emergency Solutions Grant, and one of them is about the Continuum of Care program. So first, the Emergency Solutions Grant, there's the CPD notice uh, that came out that provides more regulations around subawarding grants. So there had been restrictions around subawarding grants to public housing agencies and local redevelopment authorities that have been altered. Um, if that affects you, we encourage you to read the notice um, and ask us any questions that you have. Um, I'm imagining this applies to a very small sector of our attendees, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on from there. The next one will be of great interest to our COC program recipients. And this is about how to determine a program participant's rent contribution or occupancy charge, if that's what you're charging, 
and utility reimbursements for the CSC program. That's something that's been uh, lacking in the CSC interim rule and really requires a lot more guidance than what the interim rule is currently providing, which is why HUD came out with this CPD notice. I'm gonna save uh, my explanation to let Jim do it so I think he can do it more justice. Um, but I wanted to make you all aware that it's there, so feel free to read up on it. We've included the link here for you to look at and direct your questions to Jim Ward, which is Jim, J-I-M, at T-H-N dot org. That was one empty, right? Yeah. One empty. All right. So this is Mary. I am talking about the third one. It's a CPD memo regarding waivers to CDBG, HOME, HOPWA, and ESG programs to facilitate recovery from hurricanes Harvey, Irma, and Maria. So I just want to make sure that you saw this because if your community receives any of these four pools of funding and if you are in a federally declared disaster area from Harvey, then your local entities that receive these funds have some flexibility now through these waivers from the federal government. And some of them might make a big difference. Uh, some that I think are particularly relevant for homeless services Within the CDBG program, the waiver is allowing funds to be used for constructing new homes. So that has not traditionally been allowed within CDBG, but with this waiver, it would be allowed. And so the idea is that more construction could happen to build houses because there already wasn't enough and the hurricane destroyed some of what was there. Also, um, there is no longer a cap, or for the next couple of years, a cap on public services spending. CDBG typically caps that at 15%, but because that is a category that can pay for food, emergency shelter, case management, and related services um, to help residents in declared disaster areas until more long-term recovery resources can become available, um, HUD has waived that 15% cap. So if your community isn't already talking about that, that would be a really great one to talk about. And there's also a category called emergency grant payments that can be made to individuals or families, again, for items such as food, clothing, rent or mortgage, or utilities. And they are saying that um, that can go now up to six months instead of only three months. Um, there are also regulations specific to home, the home program, but not as many of you get that. So if that applies to you, you can read it. But um, it's things like uh, making sure that people can self-certify their income, um, making sure that communities aren't confined by fair market rent, but rather only have to use the rent reasonableness standard instead of FMR. Um, there are also some HOPWA specific waivers, and you'll want to read all of these very closely because each one's details are a bit different. And then finally, with ESG, there are two waivers. Um, one says that the 24-month cap on helping people is waived, and people can now be served for up to three years instead of two years with rental assistance, utility payments, and housing stability case management. So that could make a big difference for some people in your communities. And finally, um, for ESG, there's also a waiver of the fair market rent requirement. Um, the requirement is now that the units meet rent reasonableness only, even if they do not meet FMR. So, and I like their justification on that one was, HUD has determined that the rental vacancy rate in affected areas after the floods is extraordinarily low, which we know you know. Yeah. So anyway, we just want to make sure that you are aware, if you haven't um, looked into these pools of funding in your own community and you would like help with that, you're welcome to let me know and I can walk you through it. Again, this is Mary. Awesome. Thank you, Mary. Uh, it looks like, let's see. No questions. 
uh, Michelle did respond to that. So Michelle did respond to the Rapid Rehousing Institute, and she said that I attended the provider track, and they mostly provided working applications as it related to veterans, but the systems were more applicable to all populations. So that's her feedback. Um, we're excited to hear about Jim's feedback. He's been traveling for work a lot, and he actually took today off to use some flex time. Does anybody have any questions about anything that was covered today? Or feedback or anything? We also like puns. <laughs> Damn punny. I see not. OK, um, so our next meeting will be Wednesday, December 13th at 2 o'clock p.m. Again, that one will be hosted via Adobe Connect, not through GoToWebinar, so that will be interesting. Um, we're really looking forward to moving over to this new platform. I also just want to remind you guys it's going to be a learning curve for all of us. So, um, But I think the functionality will make these meetings even better. We'll all be in our own meeting, or uh, we'll all be in our own offices, and we'll have our webcam, so you'll see all of our faces. Um, anybody here have anything to add? No? Okay. Uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your... Ooh, hold we on. We've got a couple things that came in. Uh, so we have a question in from John Cooper that I need some clarification on. Um, John thought that I had mentioned a website that was covered during the last bit when I talked about the COC program, and I am not remembering our, if you're talking about the CPD notices or if it's the COC program. I'm trying to think of what I would have referenced. Right, but I think he's talking about the CC program. So if you could uh, type in John Cooper, do you remember? Uh, oh, John, if you're talking about the um, utility notice, and this is for everyone with the COC funded project, um, that is available. It's going to be available in the meeting minutes, but it's also in your agenda as a link. You can click on it, and it will take you to the HUD CPD notice, so that way you can look at it and see how it might apply to your program. Again, uh, Jim is really the expert now on COC program stuff, so I'm going to defer to him to help everyone figure out how to apply it to their projects. But if you do have questions about it after you read it, go ahead and shoot Jim an email. And that's for all of our COC funded uh, projects, not just John, although John does ask excellent questions. So, A plus. I think that was. All questions have been answered. Did you get. Uh, Alina, we're going to send you that link. Yeah. And it's, it should be on the agenda, too. Yeah, it'll send out, but it's one of these probably. Contribution information. That was the second one, I think. CSC. Yeah. I mean, all links and materials will be sent out, Elena, so you're going to get everything we covered today, too. And we also post our meeting minutes on our website. It normally takes us about a week to get those up, but it will be available to you on our website. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't oh. want to say eventually, because that sounds like too far in the future, but it does. there's a little bit of a lag time, but it'll be up there. She got you. Awesome. Any other questions, y'all? Okay. Well, with that, we're ending early for once. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day, rest of your week, and I hope everybody will be able to take some time off for Thanksgiving. Yes. And I hope that's also wonderful. And we're thankful for you guys. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye.